Okay, so good day, everybody. Um, thank you for now that complex. I was just going to explain that um, I have a disclosure of my own. Um, it's not a financial one. It's one that says I'm a chemist who's going to attempt to show you some patient images. So I can and will not, cannot and will not be held responsible for any pain that this may cause you. If you want to um, put in a claim, you can do that with the organizers of the conference. With that being said, I just want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, just share with you our initial South African experience working with um, the therapeutic isotope of bismuth 213. Um, as you would have heard in Professor Mike's uh, talk, we've done quite a bit of work with gallium, but this was our first opportunity to work with bismuth. Um, this work was done in collaboration with um, the group that I am in, which is radiochemistry at the South African uh, Nuclear Energy Corporation, and together with the Steve Biko Academic Hospital and the University of Pretoria. So this is just a brief overview of what I will be discussing. I'm going to skip over this really quickly. Okay, so we're into day three of the conference, and if you're like me and new to the world of theranostics, um, you're probably up to speed by now, but in case, this is just a quick refresher. Um, the success of personalized medicine depends on um, a, t a targeted drug having a linked or companion diagnostic test that is able to, with a certain degree of precision, determine whether a patient will benefit from a specific treatment or to monitor therapy in real time to determine ongoing efficacy. Theranostics refers to the development of these diagnostic tests and uh, therapeutics in such a way that treatment can be uh, tailored to an individual's uh, disease subtype as well as genetic profile. And the aim of this approach is to obviously um, aid with streamlining drug development, but also to um, improve uh, safety and um, efficacy. So just from the breakdown of the conference, I think it's pretty evident that the dominant um, theranostic pair is obviously gallium-68 and lutetium-177, uh, gatate and lutate obviously for neuroendocrine tumors and then PSMA for uh, prostate cancer. But the focus of this work uh, was on the theranostic pair of gallium and bismuth-213. And we've taken the same approach. We're going to be using dotatate for um, neuroendocrine tumors, PSMA for prostate cancer. And then we want to just talk a little bit about um, a research peptide that we're looking at as a prospective theranostic for pancreatic cancer. So this initial um, experience report is over a, about a six month period. I'm going to skip through this really quickly because I'm sure you're all familiar with the structures of um, dotatate and PSMA. I just want to mention that um, for, for the gallium radio labelings, we used PSMA 11, which is um, pictured on the screen. Um, but for bismuth 213, we used the DOTA PSMA 617. And then um, what we're calling DOTA Research Peptide 001 is actually a novel 11 mer conjugate. And as I mentioned, we're looking at this uh, having a potential application in pancreatic uh, cancer imaging and endotherapy. So this is just a look at the generators that we had access to. Um, for gallium, we're using the Itemba Labs generator, which is uh, distributed by IDB in South Africa. Um, I, I'm not going to go through any of the properties of gallium uh, as being suitable for a pet, as a PET isotope because you're familiar with it. But I just want to talk a bit about the bismuth 213. We obtained it from the actinium 225 bismuth 213 generator, which is an ITG generator. And um, bismuth is a therapeutic isotope. It's got a 46 minute half life, and um, it's emitting short range, highly energetic alpha particles. And together with um, the high linear energy transfer of these particles, it promises a superior ratio between penetration in cancer cells um, and the protection of healthy cells, therefore making bismuth 213 quite an attractive isotope for therapeutic application. So these are, this is just a summary of the radio labeling conditions that we um, used in, our, in the preparation of each tracer. We had some standard dotatate protocols, which um, we applied to the bismuth 213 labeling for dotatate, and we found that this was um, relatively easy. Um, with regards to PSMA, we're using a kit file um, and we're doing our radio labeling at room temperature. We find that after standing for five minutes, we have quantitative labeling. If this is not achieved, we let our preparation stand for about 
uh, an additional five to 10 minutes in, and the la radio labeling improves. Um, we obviously couldn't employ this strategy for the bismuth labeling because we're using the Dota PSMA 617. So we had to heat, heat that uh, preparation up, obviously, to open up the Dota and allow it to take in the bismuth. And then with regards to the research peptide, um, we did quite a number of labelings uh, using gallium uh, to uh, sort of uh, determine a labelling protocol. And um, we found that we were able to apply that very same labelling protocol to the bismuth uh, radio labelling itself. All of these uh, radio labellings were carried out with sodium acetate as the buffer, and the final solutions were sterilized by filtration directly to syringes diluted to approximately 10 milliliters. So this is just um, an overview of the, the ranges of the, prepared, uh, of the prepared doses. For dotatate and PSMA, these are obviously the range of the injected doses as well. The research peptide was obviously not injected into patients. Um, because we had access to the bismuth generator for a short period of time, we only were able to carry out three radio labelings for the research peptide, and we used those three, three radio labelings to actually investigate the influence of incubation time. And you can see that there's a marked benefit in um, incubating the uh, radio label solution for um, at least 10 minutes. Um, our QC for the research peptide for, with gallium was done using HPLC, and then we translated that method to ITLC, and we utilized that for the bismuth preparation as well. So um, with the dotatate, uh, the patients that had metastatic neuroendocrine tumors and disease progression under conventional therapy were enrolled for this preliminary study. They received three to four uh, lutate cycles, and thereafter two doses of uh, bismuth dotatate, which were given within two weeks. And um, the outcome of that was that um, there was um, bio improvement in the biochemistry parameter, and patients reported a better quality of life. With regards to the, um, the PSMA, this is a maximum intention intensity projection images of a 57-year-old patient with metastatic prostate uh, carcinoma. This patient received chemotherapy for a number of months and then was sent for a technetium 99M MDP uh, bone scan uh, in which not, no lesions were detected. Um, thereafter, this patient was sent for a gallium PSMA scan, and as you can see in image A, um, in the red circle, there's avid tracer uptake of skeletal and uh, nodal lesions. Uh, this patient then received three cycles of bismuth 213 PSMA, and uh, the initial response to therapy was seen by a drop in the PSA levels. Um, and then a few months later, this patient was uh, rescanned with gallium PSMA, and you can see a significant reduction in those lesions. With regards to our research peptide, we found that we were able to translate our radio labeling protocol from gallium to bismuth fairly easily. Um, we do require a purification step uh, for um, both preparations, and uh, this improves our RCP. Um, we find that increasing the incubation time for the bismuth labeling does um, assist with that, uh, with achieving a high RCP. Um, Thus far, uh, we still have to optimize the labeling protocol, um, but we think that it's good enough data to warrant preclinical imaging, in which case we will look at um, a rodent model. Um, from the study, we were able to see that from a radiochemical perspective, the preparations are fairly robust. Um, all of the bismuth ad administrations were well tolerated, and. Um, showing that an, this is an effective therapeutic option in patients with metastatic prostate cancer. And this obviously warrants further clinical studies as uh, with off gallium and bismuth as a, a theranostic pair. Lastly, I'd like to thank the uh, nuclear medicine department at Steve Biko Academic Hospital for uh, preparing and handling all of the patients before and after the imaging, and uh, to ITG for kindly uh, loaning us a test generator to carry out this work. And um, if you haven't already seen, these are just some of the posters that we have from my South African colleagues here um, on gallium PSMA um, and uh, dotatate work as well as long-term evaluation of uh, the PSMA 11 kit that um, we've developed. Thank you.
questions? What were the doses again of the bismuth uh, piece of Um medicine? Can I go back, maybe? I don't know them off. Um, I wonder if I can. Any other questions? So, I, I think, think it was 100. 100? 100? 100 mega Becquerel? Yes, but then we did it twice because uh, of the generator. And did, did you see any uh, dry mouth and eosinophilia <coughs> from the therapies that they've reported from Heidelberg? Come. So on the bismuth, uh, we didn't actually see much of that, but on actinium, we did, strange enough, yes, with the bismuth, at least. That's nothing. I mean, there seemed to be a, a change in intensity on the imaging. Yes. You know? The intensity was there, but the side effect and the patient complaint was, was very minimal. Interesting. Any other qu question over here? Um, do you see any uh, radiolysis of the bismuth PSMA peptide? No. No, it's stable. Mm. Do you, yeah, do you dilute we, out? What, what's the final formulation that you use? With and, the, and what's the volume? With the bismuth. Yeah. So um, it's, we're using, um, a, we do a fractionated dilution of the generator, and then we're using one a milliliter of the, um, of the bismuth. And then um, we have a, about half a mil of um, sodium acetate buffer. And then uh, that preparation is then diluted up to approximately 10 moles, just to adjust the pH for injection. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thanks.